Madagascar is part of Africa, right? But there is one problem. The two bro continents have not seen each other for years. Like literally millions of years. Yeah, I know, two years is such a long time since the two friends last met right? But jokes aside, Africa and Madagascar have been disintegrated from each other for far too long. But who is to be blamed? But the one who said mountains and mountains can't meet must have not been born in this century of technology and innovation. This is to see throughout history, humanity has demonstrated an innate drive to push beyond its boundaries, resulting in remarkable achievements and inventions that redefine what is possible. One such example is the construction of the longest bridges, where engineers have engineered marvels of engineering to connect distant points over vast bodies of water. These bridges, spanning miles over treacherous terrain, symbolize humanity's determination to overcome geographical challenges and facilitate connectivity. Similarly, the construction of the tallest buildings and perhaps one of the most audacious achievements in in human history is the journey to the moon. Same case with Madagascar in Africa. So, can Africa and Madagascar be bridged back together? For starters, Madagascar, located in the southwestern Indian Ocean, holds a unique position geographically, separated from the African coast by the Mozambique Channel. Despite its isolation, Madagascar has gained global recognition and has proved to be one of the best countries on Earth. You see, Madagascar is still part of Africa. But one problem though, they are a distance apart. Like a distance drive apart. But how did the two separate at first? And how can we bridge them back together? Welcome back to Storytelling Recap. We would like to ask you to please subscribe and like this video if you like content like this. By doing so, you will be notified whenever we upload a new video and motivate us to produce more videos. This means you will be always updated on what's happening worldwide. And if you have already subscribed, welcome back and be blessed. Here, we upload the best content on what's happening that will keep you watching and entertained as well. So, if you love videos like this, once again, subscribe, like and comment down below what you think. With that said, let's start the video. You see, once inseparable companions in the ancient dance of continental drift, eventually found themselves drifting apart. Oh, trust me, I'm not gonna bore you with the geography stuff. But picture this, millions of years ago, the Earth's tectonic plates were in constant motion, shaping the landscapes we know today. That's a long time for once inseparable bro geolocations. But how did this happen? Africa, with its majestic savannas and towering mountains, was part of a larger landmass called Gondwana. Now, Gondwana was quite the party, imagine a supercontinent hosting all the continents we recognize today as its guests. But as time passed, for instance, geological forces began to stir, pushing and pulling at Gondwana seams. You might wonder what sparked this breakup. Well, let me explain. As Gondwana started to fracture, Madagascar found itself caught in the middle of a continental tug of war. You see, while Africa wanted to stick with its neighbors, other geological forces had different plans. Picture this, imagine trying to keep a family together during a game of tug of war, with each member pulling in a different direction. For millions of years, Madagascar clung to Africa, but eventually, the forces pulling them apart grew too strong. I kid you not, it was like watching a slow-motion breakup in geologic time. Remember, continents may seem solid and immovable, but they're always on the move, albeit at a pace imperceptible to us mere mortals. As Madagascar drifted away, it embarked on its own journey, forging its unique identity and biodiversity. Meanwhile, Africa continued its march across the globe, shaping the world we know today. But let me tell you, their separation left a mark on both, Africa lost a chunk of its landmass, while Madagascar gained independence. This vast expanse of water, about 250 miles wide, serves as a natural barrier between the island and mainland Africa. One of Madagascar's most iconic inhabitants is the lemur, a primitive primate found nowhere else on Earth. These fascinating creatures, along with other endemic species like chameleons and fossas, draw wildlife enthusiasts and researchers from around the world to explore the island's biodiversity. Additionally, Madagascar plays a significant role in global trade due to its strategic location in the Indian Ocean. As the world's fifth largest island, it possesses considerable natural resources, including minerals, agricultural land, and fisheries. These resources contribute contribute to the island's economic importance, attracting trade partners and investors seeking to benefit from its abundance. Madagascar is approximately 1,704 miles or 2,743 kilometers away from the nearest point on the mainland coast of Africa. The distance between the two nearest points on Madagascar and the mainland Africa is about 420 kilometers approximately 261 miles. So, the distance between Madagascar and Africa varies depending on the specific locations being compared. But why is there no bridge between Madagascar and Africa? Let me explain. And before you tell me it's impossible to build such a bridge, humans are known to go beyond their means and do wonderful things. Building a 261 miles bridge is nothing for the two lost friends. You see, the longest bridge in the world, the Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge in China, measures approximately 164 kilometers about 102 miles long. While this bridge is incredibly impressive in terms of its length, it falls short of the 261 mile mark. 
Therefore, as of now, there is no bridge that extends over a distance of 250 miles. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. Just by adding less than thrice the distance of the longest bridge on Earth, it sounds more doable. However, it's worth noting that there have been proposals and discussions about mega bridge projects spanning extremely long distances, such as the proposed bridge connecting Alaska to Russia over the Bering Strait. Still, none of these projects have materialized to the extent of a 250 mile long bridge. Do you now get my point? It's not rocket science. And before you tell me that's impossible, let me paint you a picture of the distance we are talking about here. If you choose to walk to Madagascar, the average walking speed is around 3 minutes 4 miles per hour. At this pace, it would take approximately 65 5 minutes 87 hours that's around 3 days to walk 261 miles. When cycling, the average cycling speed varies but is typically between 10 minutes 15 miles per hour. Using an average of 12.5 miles per hour, it would take approximately 20.88 hours to cycle 261 miles. That's barely a day. How about when driving? The average driving speed depends on factors like road conditions, traffic, and speed limits. Assuming an average speed of 60 miles per hour, it would take approximately 4.35 hours to drive 261 miles. Just 4 hours drive to Madagascar. Public transport speeds vary depending on factors like stops, routes, and congestion. On average, public buses or trains may travel at around 30 minutes 40 miles per hour. Using an average of 35 miles per hour, it would take approximately 7.46 hours to cover 261 miles. If considering air travel, commercial flights travel at an average speed of around 550 minutes 580 miles per hour. At this speed, it would take less than one hour to cover 261 miles, factoring in takeoff, cruising, and landing times. You see, this is a distance between a nose and mouth considering you will be using a bridge. So, one might wonder, Africa has a whole continent for hers, f, why does it need a small Madagascar anyways? Well, let me tell you why you're wrong. Madagascar holds significant importance for Africa and the world due to several factors. Firstly, its rich biodiversity and unique ecosystems contribute to the global ecological balance. As one of the world's biodiversity hotspots, Madagascar hosts a vast array of endemic plant and animal species found nowhere else on Earth. Protecting Madagascar's biodiversity is crucial for maintaining global biodiversity and preserving valuable genetic resources. Moreover, Madagascar's geographical location in the Indian Ocean off the southeastern coast of Africa makes it strategically significant. It serves as a key maritime gateway, facilitating trade and commerce between Africa, Asia, and beyond. Madagascar's ports play a vital role in regional trade and contribute to economic development in the surrounding countries. Additionally, Madagascar's geopolitical importance extends to security cooperation, as it collaborates with nations in the Indo-Pacific region to address common security challenges. Furthermore, Madagascar offers valuable resources such as minerals, agricultural products, and fisheries, contributing to Africa's economic growth and food security. Its diverse culture and heritage also enrich the African continent, fostering cultural exchange and promoting tourism. To support my point further, Africa and Madagascar should be linked for several compelling reasons. Firstly, fostering closer ties between Africa and Madagascar can lead to enhanced economic cooperation and trade. Madagascar's strategic location in the Indian Ocean can serve as a vital gateway for African countries to access global markets, and vice versa. By strengthening transportation and communication networks between Africa and Madagascar, both regions can benefit from increased trade opportunities, investment flows, and economic growth. Secondly, collaboration between Africa and Madagascar holds immense potential for addressing shared challenges, including environmental conservation, climate change mitigation, and sustainable development. Madagascar's rich biodiversity and unique ecosystems make it a global priority for conservation efforts. By working together, African nations can leverage Madagascar's expertise in biodiversity conservation and apply best practices to protect their own natural resources. Furthermore, linking Africa and Madagascar culturally and socially can promote greater understanding, exchange, and unity among diverse populations. By fostering cultural exchanges, educational programs, and people-to-people -people connections, Africa and Madagascar can celebrate their shared heritage while embracing their unique identities. Let's compare all the odds here. Bring Madagascar, bring Africa. How can we go about it? To understand this, let's think outside the box. You see, linking Madagascar and Africa with a bridge might sound like a fantastic idea at first glance. I mean, just imagine the possibilities. Trade, tourism, and cultural exchange could flourish like never before. But let me explain why, despite the mere 261 mile distance between the two, such a bridge remains nothing more than a dream. First off, let's talk geography. 
Madagascar and mainland Africa are separated by the Mozambique Channel, which, believe it or not, is over 2,000 meters deep in some places. That's deeper than the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. Picture this, building a bridge over such a vast expanse of water would be a monumental engineering challenge. It would make even the most audacious bridge projects in history look like child's play. But let me tell you, even if we somehow manage to overcome the engineering hurdles, there's still the question of cost. Have you ever tried to budget for a big project, like renovating your house or planning a wedding? Well, imagine the bill for building a bridge across the Mozambique Channel. We're talking billions, if not trillions, of dollars. And let me remind you, money doesn't grow on trees. We'd have to convince governments, investors, and international organizations to cough up the cash. Not an easy task, I kid you not. And here's another thing to consider, environmental impact. Building a bridge of that magnitude would undoubtedly have a significant impact on the marine ecosystem. Remember, we're talking about disrupting the habitat of countless marine species, some of which may be unique to the region. Plus, there's the risk of pollution from construction activities and increased maritime traffic. Is it worth jeopardizing the delicate balance of nature just to shave a few hours off travel time between Madagascar and Africa? Now, let me bring up another point, politics. Ah, yes, the wonderful world of international relations. Even if we somehow manage to secure the funding and address the environmental concerns, there's still the matter of getting all the relevant parties on board. I mean, imagine trying to coordinate a project of this scale involving multiple countries, each with its own interests and agendas. It's enough to give even the most seasoned diplomats a headache. But let me tell you something else. Despite all these challenges, I truly believe there's a solution out there. Maybe it's not a bridge in the traditional sense, but perhaps we could explore other options, like underwater tunnels or high-speed ferries. And who knows, with advances in technology and international cooperation, maybe one day we'll see Madagascar and Africa linked in ways we never thought possible. In my opinion, the key lies in thinking outside the box and approaching the problem with creativity and innovation. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither will a bridge spanning the Mozambique Channel. But with perseverance and determination, anything is possible. So let's keep dreaming big and working towards a future where Madagascar and Africa are more connected than ever before. But what do you think? Should Africa be reconnected with Madagascar again? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Your engagement means the world to us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the video, so please drop a comment below to share your feedback, insights, or any questions you may have. Your comments help us improve and create content tailored to your interests. If you enjoyed the video and found it valuable or entertaining, please consider sharing it with your friends, family, or any anyone who might benefit from watching. Sharing our content helps us reach a wider audience and grow our community. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Your likes not only show your support but also signal to YouTube that our content is worth recommending to others. And finally, if you haven't already, we'd be honored if you subscribe to our channel. Subscribing ensures you never miss out on our latest uploads and allows us to continue creating content you love. Remember always, successful people look like you. And all you need in life, God has it, just ask him and it shall be given unto you. Once again, thank you for being a part of our journey and for your incredible support. We can't wait to share more stories with you. See you in our next video. Subscribe.